everyone so welcome to this uh, third consecutive class on laparoscopic uh, hysterectomy so today we are discussing about uh, how to deal with the third step that is the uterosacrals and probably the vault uh, opening so i think as i told you in the first class itself like doing uh, tlh safely and uh, doing it with within 40 minutes along with the vault closure the suturing is a dream for every gynecologist who is uh, uh, trying to do laparoscopies i think that is one of the goal points for many of us and uh, we all get stuck or even i remember in my journey that uh, we took a lot of time to understand as to how to open the vault and a lot of like trial and error will go on like with the vaginal tube without the vaginal tube uh, how to do it where to give uh, the cut and how to manipulate the uterus whether to use the myoma screw whether to use the vaginal manipulator all these things like unless we try it out we will not be able to like uh, i think master any of those techniques especially depending on what is our comfort so vault opening yes definitely is a very important step because that is where a lot of time is wasted many a times and the uh, uh, completion of the surgery depends many a times on the vault opening and vault closure and many complications also happen and the uh, uh, hemostasis also some might find it very difficult to achieve at uh, the vault so this is uh, actually a very very important class but i would request uh, dr jay to keep it uh, short and to only practical points uh, and he has a certain technique that he follows where he can open the vault uh, so quickly that uh, i think it may not be possible for any of us to do it with that uh, uh, speed but i think it is the principles that is more important and what uh, little little steps that he advises us to do i think that is very important yeah please okay so i will quickly share the screen and uh, i think you can see my screen right shilpa madam yeah see i think the 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 absolutely most important point when it comes to uh, you know vault is just just remember this quickly very much fastly okay see you have bladder correct and mm -hmm. behind that you have vagina correct mm -hmm. and from the vagina see this is the cervix so this is the portion vaginalis of the cervix correct mm -hmm. and then you have the supra vaginal portion of the cervix mm -hmm. and then is the uterus correct no yeah from that por just just that supra vaginal portion till that very top of the posterior vagina for people who are self calling themselves as urogynac enthuse it is point d okay that is where exactly you have uterosacrals exactly there okay exactly there just to make life easy just let me just cut it into a coronal plane so if i just cut the entire plane like this you will be able to see the bladder here correct mm -hmm. behind that will be the cervix behind that is going to be the rectum correct no shilpa yes. madam right only no yeah like this only no it is mm -hmm. and this is uterosacral it is not vaginosacral ligament it is uterosacral ligament just remember that besides the uterosacral right besides the uterosacral you have ureter correct mm -hmm. so when you do your surgery and when you cut this ligament when you cut the uterosacral when you cut the uterosacral close to the cervix one one not even 1 cm one plane below that you will straight open in the vagina so basically if you cut this plane see this this uterosacral will fall back like this and the plane underneath this will straight open in the vagina simple simple it never ever 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 changes what changes is your attitude many a times people do not want to cut the uterosacrals because they are worried that if they cut the uterosacrals just in case they are aggressive by mistake they will damage the ureter remember you can damage the ureter when you cut the uterosacrals only in two situations one is if you deliberately want to damage it 
that is the most common situation and second where even if you are not deliberate you will 100% damage it and that is endometriosis because people do not have a habit of something called as lateralization of the ureter okay now after you understand that straight we will go on to the how to open the vault see this straight onto the vault nothing else doing at all only okay see it will keep on going out see this so beautifully it has just exited everything yeah just look you can hear this now Madam? you are left with an opportunity where yeah. you will open up the vault so whenever it comes to opening of opening up of the vault for such a large uterus right people would say that what would be the uterine manipulation which we will use so nothing honestly this is where the uterosacral is adherent to the vagina can you see that this is mm. where the uterosacral is adherent to the vagina see this so you go to the uterosacral cut that's where you cut the uterosacral you disconnect the uterosacral from the posterior vagina which we have done that means this is the vagina yeah this is the point where the vagina will open see this exactly here once you disconnect you will have the vagina opened up here the reason why you should probably try to sort of understand this is because see that so that no manipulation is required this is exactly how the vagina will keep on opening no matter what no matter how no matter what you required for achieve. you to cut it open in such a nice manner from absolutely any angle at all no manipulation i will always have this habit of pushing the posterior part away uh, pravin is somebody who is assisting me you can see what happens uh, when when young boys like pravin are assisting that they have learnt the surgery in a particular manner so their hands are say staying very very stable so if you have somebody who is helping you out in the surgeries in your operation theaters then try to make them like pravin where his left hand is simply not moving okay his left hand is like a robot this left hand does not really move all i need to do with pravin's hand okay so that is that vault opening and another very important part is vault closure because that has been asked so i want to actually tell everybody that vault closure is the most basic basicest part of the surgery just look this is a step which you should learn to do yeah just so i think there is no bleeding inside nahi pravin suction that is the vault correct so thank you can you see the vault mm no bleeding nothing inside is very nice i will just pass the suture and once i pass centimeters right here in the very sort of chiseled hand movements over this yeah upar great see now how you should hold the vault see what pravin did he went straight to the peritoneum which is important so hold the peritoneum and lift the peritoneum up when you lift the peritoneum up automatically the vault gets exposed to you right in front of you now when you go to the vault go full thickness and go full thickness yeah when you go full thickness full thickness automatically see that the the needle is getting pulled so guys you must understand i am always Here, using barbed sutures only i do not use vicryl and all these types of things on the vault I've, only barbed i have entered in the eye of the needle now here grasp full thickness bites it's important to take the full thickness bites through this okay go back full thickness always take full thickness bites when you do that see that the vault closed from one end go to the opposite end close the vault and that should be your last bite i mean this is going to be my last bite i if you see i am not somebody who will go and cramp that uterosacral up just for me to go and suture ovary is intact other ovary is intact right so now are this fine. is something which before i conclude you should see okay see when you close the vault right last point of of your vault closure and the mistake which happens in vault closure so i will draw the vault this is the vault which is open like this this is somewhere where that uterosacral is lying down okay 
and the ureter is also going besides this okay biggest cause of having fistula ureter vaginal fistula is vault closure never ever go and tie here never do that when people want to take those angles no people are wanting to take nahi nahi angle bite is very important this is very important that is very important i think shilpa madam has seen me doing this just leave the angle there go 0.5 cm away from the angle one more bite in the center like this probably one more if it is required and 0.5 cm away from the angle just take your sutures in this direction it will make sure that your fistulas which is the most commonest problem in this entire surgery of hysterectomy if the vault closure is not done properly is going to be completely avoided okay yeah let With that i quickly complete do this yes i will just ask you quickly so uh, i know you never use a manu uh, the vaginal tube to yeah. open the vault but initially like you know i mean till we learn the haptic feedback and also till we learn how the tissue feels over those laparoscopic instruments i think visual uh, at least recognition of the vault may be important so uh, do you think like you know uh, putting that uh, vaginal uh, tube does it uh, really like reduce the uh, complications of uh, the fistulas or Not does at all. it uh, or does it help in uh, identifying the vault much more easier uh, in any cases or Not in any all. special situation okay so the second thing is like you open it directly with the bipolar shearer as you should so initially like you know everybody wants to do this like monopolar usage on the uh, vaginal vault so what do you think like you know i mean is it uh, uh, like initially we were told that the bipolar will cause a lot of like post uh, uh, hysterectomy discharge through the vagina and there will be a lot of charring so monopolar is much better so what is your uh, uh, take on it charring can occur based on how badly or nicely you use the instrument and not on the source of energy Mm. you can have charring with monopolar also madam you can have charring yeah. with bipolar mm. also so it is nothing to do with monopolar bipolar it is just how well you are using the instrument nothing else yeah. matters yeah true so in these uh, situations like when uh, we are going to that angle especially so there will be like, like you know there is there will be one annoying bleeder which will be pumping so and we try to coagulate 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 first with uh, our shearer and then we use the bipolar and we go on buzzing buzzing so do you think like you know the I've, excessive i've answered this before i'll answer again if there is a bleeding at the angle of the vault go to uterine at origin simple who will go be quiet i don't think uterine at origin is as simple as uh, you describe it to be especially after hysterectomy okay so people will find it tough to do the retroperitoneal dissection as it is because they will be hugging the uterus and then doing the hysterectomy in 99.9% of the cases so you tell it without actually opening the retroperitoneum so the only way in which you should i mean see i am not a believer of that then at all because you are then going very close to the ureter and the transmission of heat occurs close to the ureter correct so i would not i would genuinely not recommend that don't do that see Please. you you should understand that for all gynecologist it is like a step step by step learning and improving their skills we cannot do like first like we cannot know everything like doing bowel resection doing retroperitoneum doing uterine at origin doing internal iliac artery ligation and then we do tlh so first is diagnostic hysterolapse and then comes little bit like you know small small hysterectomies drillings and such that and then we uh, actually start doing the hysterectomies so in that i mean retroperitoneum may not be a major part of training for many gynecologists so that is why we see so many fistulas which are referred to us so this is what i mean like you know i mean i understand that the safety will depend because suturing itself is like one step we are trained to like initially we close the uh, the vault from the vagina and then we learn the laparoscopic suturing and then we do it spending a lot of time in learning all that so step by step elevation in their uh, the skills is how actually it goes for everybody so i understand you mean like you know i mean just go to the uterine and then at the origin and then coagulate it but uh, i don't think it would be as simple as that for at least 90% of the gynecologists that i know of 
So in these cases, you think like, you know, you be sure See, to use the a... problem, the reason why I'm telling this is because by the time you go and coagulate, it would have retracted into the retroperitoneum. Once yes. it retracts in the retroperitoneum, your ambition is to just hold a big bite of it and coagulate. In that holding yes. big bite, that problem of heat transmission occurs to that medial part of the ureter, madam. And then it sloughs off and gives rise to fistula. Okay, tell me this. If the... There is a small, 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 small users, okay, especially in PID, especially in like, you know, where there are additions and you have released. So do you keep this bipolar, uh, the uh, 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 the blades open and then just buzz it? Just keep it like, you know, not completely close it, just uh, open it and give a little, uh, stop laughing. <laughs> That is like a diplomatic bipolar, <laughs> not completely working and not completely closed. I don't I think, uh, I, I, I have never seen anything like this. Okay, okay. I will show you one day. Okay. I think this was very good. Uh, so I think this will require like, you know, some uh, questionnaires, which we will get in the groups that we can um, do it as a Q&A in the next class. So next class, we can actually talk about like, you know, adesiolysis and uh, how to actually do adesiolysis before the TLH, be it omental additions, be it uh, like, you know, a little bit of bowel additions and things like that. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us on a third consecutive night during the